Hello to everybody and welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC. Today's short video is going to be about indexing on the tool and cutter grinder and I'll show you a couple of the indexing finger units that I used and then we'll pull them apart and have a look at the bits that they're made of. This is a bit of a combination unit. The spindle and front end came off an air bearing spindle that we tried to use first for annular cutters and it was a bugger to use. It was just too big and cumbersome and very hard to adjust on the rotating base so we uh, bought this tool and cutter grinder got the smaller head but this is just too good to pass up. The indexing head can move along in a groove on the top of the rod. The mount is very very interesting just a bit of angle bracket with a slot in it so as well as being able to move it fore and aft in the slot you can also twist it. It gives you almost infinite indexing at the cutter. Now I had a fellow in here learning how to grind tools earlier today and he set it up reasonable but not that hot. If you watch the end of the indexing fender, finger, as we rotate against the stop it allows it to pull it in towards the centre of the cutter and this can lead to a small amount of error, not large but small. Now I taught him that if you move it back a little bit in the slot you can engage lower down where you are more at a tangential angle to the flute and you don't tend to get that problem. But having this indexer on top of that workhead uh, makes it fairly universal and easy to use. So I'll show you the mount etc on the table later on but this is a good index introduction to this tool. Here we are back again on the Clarkson Mark II tool and cutter grinder. I had a few more slitting saws to put through this weekend and finish up the job. This is the indexing arrangement. Very, very rigid, very accurate and repeatable. Does a fantastic job for me. This particular indexing unit came with the old Servian tool and cutter grinder, the form relief heads on. But it's fairly rigid and this is really easy to duplicate there. There's no hard parts. You can make it out of billet material. They can very easily be welded together or just machined out of a block. We'll take it apart on the bench later on. I have to anyway because this column is just covered in a bit of corrosion and crap and the unit doesn't slide like it should. But the base is relatively easy, just a slot. It is quite thick and that gives a good rigidity and even cantilever it out as far as it is. I get no uh, wobble with it and I like this unit because you can adjust the bloody thing everywhere. Very heavy, heavy column, I'd say a bit of three quarter inch. Then we come to the castings. Up the top, it's just the boss of slides on the rod and an eye off at 90 degrees for this pivot to go through. And big block at the end of the pivot for the actual indexing adjustment to go through. Now a couple of things with this, it has a spring loaded finger which snaps quite well. It's quite a wide finger so you've got a wide range of pickup. It's replaceable with a couple of screws there. And this whole body moves inside the housing with a micrometer adjustment at the back. So you can do very, very fine adjustments for um, relief angle or for fit. If you don't get it to fit in very, very well, you can reduce the length and drop it into the next tooth or drop it into the following tooth. So in that respect, it really works well. Being able to swivel it here, swivel it at the mount, means you can get into a big variety of tools. And also it works very well on this particular workhead at the back of my indexing collars that I've shown previously. So that's a good rundown. I'll now put them onto the table, take them apart, we can look at the bits, and I'll introduce a few other very, very simple indexing fingers that came with the Clarkson. It was very well kitted out for that sort of tool. Back soon. Now before we get down on the table, a little bit more of a look at the Clarkson grinder. That's the top mounting plate where this kind of indexer sits and you can index off the rear on the indexing disc or index off the front directly onto the cutter. Very very simple bracket, we'll have a better look at that later on. This shows you the simple indexing ring that I put on the back of the spindle held on with a grub screw, not very difficult to make. Okay, a little bit further into the bowels of the Clarkson right here is a bracket that bolts onto the housing that holds the table assembly. Now it can be assembled in a couple of different positions and a couple of different angles, but you have a plate here that can hold an indexing finger, 
and that can be swiveled over to bring it into the other plane. So that's another way of indexing from underneath big side and face cutters and get all of your indexing equipment out of the way so it's not sitting up on top. Quite intelligent with the Clarkson. It comes with a couple of different brackets and there are several accessories. Uh, if you get online to a site called the Bedroom Workshop, the fellow has over 300 pages of information on the Clarkson and a lot of it is homemade attachments and it is a really good uh, place to get tool and cutter grinder info. Okay, I'll move you around to the table now. Okay, now we're at the table. Magic little light helping a bit there. Uh, a look at the items pulled apart and with a couple of rulers thrown in so you can tell what size things should be. I'll try and keep my hairy arms out of the way as much as possible as we go through this. Now this item that came with the Servian has two possible bases, a short and a long version. There you are. Phalanx. Quite a generous slot. I use a smaller T-bolt than normal because it fits into the Clarkson slot a bit better. As you can see, it's quite substantial. If you want a good indexer, that's what's necessary. A lot of rigidity. Uh, make it out of cast or steel, whatever you want, but make it a little bit heavy because the weight will suck up the vibration and give you a lot less grief. This is the casting that's in the middle. Quite a beefy bit of an affair. Inch and an eighth bore. That fits the cylindrical housing. Just slip through on both sides so it clamps readily and swivels here. Not too difficult at all to machine. Very expensive to buy this sort of tooling. So hop to and make it yourself. Once again, the bedroom workshop has pictures from around the world, guys that have built this sort of thing themselves. This is a little bit more difficult. Move that aside to make yourself nice micrometer base. Grub screw runs in that groove. Very nicely sprung piece of equipment. All around good gear. Mind you, that's probably as old as me and still in reasonable condition. Very, very accurate. And I use this particularly to just change the clearance angle a little bit or to get over the top of a tooth onto the next one. Love it to pieces. Should make one myself because I'm moving it too frequently from one machine to the next. Okay, we'll set up the next lot. Here's some of the original kit that came with the Clarkson. And there are differences between the Mark 1, Mark 2 and Mark 3 accessories. Uh, this is the Mark 2, the intermediate one. It's not badly built, but a hell of a lot less substantial than the Servian. This is the machine that was used in the factory to make all their end mills and slot drills. And it's probably quite useful for that job, but get outside of that envelope as I was doing earlier with the slitting saws and you start to exceed the rigidity. Um, I will pull the table apart and clean and adjust the gibbs one day, but I'm just too bloody busy to do it at the moment. So we'll look at one or two pieces at a time. That's the bit bolts down onto the table support mechanism. And you can see this can be rotated 90 degrees so the indexer can be either vertical or horizontal. Can be clamped down on the table. Fairly universal piece of gear. Very, very small. A very simple weldment, so make one yourself. And for sizes, I will not make a drawing. Do you have the rulers? That'll give you a good idea of what's happening. This is the index that it sits on top of the work here. And straight away I saw you can change the field of use substantially just by turning it over and putting the indexer in the other side. The actual indexer, just a bit of half inch bar, machine it halfway off, one grub screw and a bit of hacksaw blade does a very, very good job, quite appropriate. Although I prefer use jigsaw blades because they're just a little bit thinner and they flex more. The short index fingers like these don't have as much flex and that's one thing I don't like. They don't click back as far so a little bit more uncertain for an old fool like me to make it work properly. And the next piece, this gangly looking doodad, believe it or not, is a very very useful bit of gear. If you're stuck and you just can't find how to index it, mounting plates for clamps, this can fit into this bracket, you can mount onto holes up on the table and it gives you a myriad of ways to mount and turn brackets 
once you get there, you can say, hell, I can do it with the other indexer a little easier because now I know what it is that I want to do. So I've used that a couple of times to get me out of trouble, seeing how foolish I was, get things up with a decent indexer and do the job. But for a setup to learn how to do it, that's a very good bit of homemade. This is an item that came with the wrong foo grinder. It's another cast base, which is quite a nice bit of work. It's longer. It has a riser at the end with two grub screws to bolt your indexing finger to. Uh, I keep it around the tool and cutter uh, area for another reason. It's a very good flat base. I put that on the table for the form relief grinder, put a square on the end of it, and that gives me the correct position for timing the flutes on countersinks. So there's a lot of odd things you can do in tool and cutter grinding that weren't intended to be done with these tools originally, but you can see the length. Nine inches by about inch and a half. Not too hard to put together. That will get you out of a lot of trouble in grinding. And the last one. That's what I use on annular cutters. Not too difficult to make, although I didn't make this bit. As I said, it came out of an air bearing spindle. Just a couple of nuts to hold it onto the back there. A slot in the mount foot which gives you both radial and axial movement and a very very simple indexer a couple of screws to lock it to the shaft this is quite a good little micrometer adjustment and if you unwind it far enough the bloody thing falls out that soon makes the skin around your bum tighten up if it's halfway through sharpening a cutter and that's a jigsaw blade that I've reground for the job. So I think that that is a pretty good show. Yeah. Now once again, very, very rigid. Although it's cantilevered, it's reasonably heavy material. It absorbs a lot of vibration and it doesn't give me any grief. That's it for today. Please like and subscribe. If you've got any questions, throw them up as a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. But tool and cutter grinding, it's difficult because there's not many books around. You've got to look for some of the old books like Moltrecht's Machine Shop Practice. I think it's volume two. That answers it quite a bit. There's an old Cincinnati video that I stumbled across and have not been able to refine. I think it's from Vintage Machinery in USA. Uh, I've got a Cowell's tool and cutter grinder manual that was very, very helpful. Other than that, you've got to piece it together yourself. It's a, a bit of a black art. I think it will be coming back. The price of high-speed steel tools is just going up more and more again. There you are. Any questions, drop me a line.